It's All Too Much is one of the most magical, creative, and sadly underappreciated songs that the Beatles ever released. It also contains some of the most hotly debated unsolved mysteries in their entire catalog. In this episode, I'm going to share those mysteries and attempt to solve them. And as a fair warning, once I point them out, you can't unhear this. The song kicks off with perhaps the most well-known of these mysteries. This opening sequence, bizarre even by mid-period Beatles standards, has been the subject of endless debate. The voice sounds like John Lennon, so that's not the mystery. It's what he's saying. According to one commonly cited theory, he's saying, To Yorma, a dedication to guitarist Yorma Kalkinen of Jefferson Airplane. I have to point it out since it is a popular theory, but I think it's wrong for a few reasons. Firstly, while Paul had spent some time with Yorma in San Francisco earlier that year, there's no evidence that John or George had actually met him until months after the song was recorded. So it seems like it would have been an oddly random dedication for John to have made in the moment. But secondly, it just doesn't sound like Yorma. When listening carefully to the isolated vocal track, you can distinctly hear an F sound at the tail end, sort of like muff. Let's listen to that isolated vocal track and see if your perception changes. I think the isolated audio confirms that the Yorma theory is, well, a bit too much. Another common belief is that he's saying to your mother. You know, like, where to your mother? I think the to your mother explanation is much more convincing, as it's the type of random quip that John would make. Unfortunately, short of discovering some lost Lennon interview, I don't think we'll ever really know for sure. And as for what follows in the isolated vocal track, it sounds like total gibberish to me. Anyway, what do you think John is saying? Let me know in the comments. There's a bunch of other interesting anomalies in the vocals, and it's all too much. Like borrowed lyrics about lifted directly from a contemporary hit song called Sorrow. With your long blonde hair and your eyes of blue. And there's the awesome break when Paul jumps into a trippy, indecipherable melody. Me And last but not least, there's a funny moment toward the chaotic refrain at the end, when someone lets out a bunch of woes and an extra too much. Like with a lot of Beatles songs, these little organic studio anomalies are simply part of the magic that makes their music so endearing and so timeless. But the most perplexing mystery of It's All Too Much isn't about the vocals. It's about that wild guitar track. And specifically, who is playing it? I want to first point out an important detail. The instrumental track, that is the drums, bass, guitar, and organ, was recorded live with the band all together during a session on May 25th, 1967. Why is that important? Well, it means that each member of the band must have been playing one and only one of those four instruments. There were additional parts added to the track later on, including the vocals and the clapping and the trumpets. But on that instrumental track, there's only one guitar being played, and therefore only one Beatle playing it. So who was it? I think we can safely rule out Ringo. Sorry, Ringo. That leaves us with George, Paul, or John. You might assume, as some fans do, that George Harrison, who wrote the song and plays guitar on countless other Beatles songs, also played the guitar here. But George, according to his own testimony in a later interview, is actually playing the organ which makes sense since the song is composed fundamentally around that main organ riff. So that leaves two Beatles left, John or Paul. This might seem like a simple answer. I mean, ever since their early days, Paul was the group's bassist and John was the rhythm guitarist. So Paul on bass, John on guitar. Pretty simple, right? Well, not quite. In 1999, George Harrison was interviewed around the time of the re-release of the Yellow Submarine film and the remixed song track, which included It's All Too Much in a fabulous, fresh new mix. 
When asked about the song, George recalled, the guitar feedback on the intro to It's All Too Much was done in May of 1967, so it was pre-Hendrix before he started to go wild with that stuff since his Are You Experienced album hadn't come out yet. But now I don't think I was playing the guitar feedback. As I say, I was playing the organ, so I think that was probably Paul that did that. George isn't the only one who thinks Paul played the guitar here. Countless posts on Beatles websites and music forums and YouTube comment threads reveal that many fans believe Paul is playing the guitar part, and therefore John must be playing the bass. And there's a fairly strong case to be made. For one, the guitar part on It's All Too Much doesn't sound anything like John's other guitar work while in the Beatles. But it does sound suspiciously similar to the handful of instances when Paul McCartney played lead guitar, especially around this middle period from 1965 to 1968. Here's a few examples. Let's compare this mini guitar solo from It's All Too Much with Paul's guitar solo from Taxman, another George Harrison song, in fact, that was recorded roughly a year earlier. Here's another example of Paul's solo style from Good Morning, Good Morning from Sgt. Pepper's, which was recorded only a few months prior to It's All Too Much. These parts all exhibit Paul's distinctly fiery style, often played on the upper frets of the guitar's neck with a progression reminiscent of an Indian instrument like a sitar. And that wild feedback in the intro is very reminiscent of early Jimi Hendrix, whom Paul had met in January 1967 and deeply admired. Although Paul's lead guitar contributions to the Beatles catalog are far and few between, his handiwork is distinctive. But as much as I want to believe that this is Paul playing guitar and it's all too much, I'm not convinced it's him. Remember how I said earlier that the instrumental backing track was recorded all together? By process of elimination, that means that whoever wasn't playing guitar, either John or Paul, had to be playing bass. And while most of the bass track is simple enough to have been played by either John or Paul, there are a few sophisticated sequences that seem very similar to Paul's typical style in this period. For example, While John did play bass on a couple of songs on the White Album and Let It Be, there's no evidence of him having played bass on any other songs before mid-1968. John was not going to play bass. <laughs> so it seems pretty unlikely that this random moment a year earlier would have been John's debut on what was usually McCartney's responsibility. And again, there's no evidence of overdubs to the bass or guitar tracks, so Paul couldn't have played both. As for the style, unlike Paul's other solos, which often span a wider range of notes and often very meticulous, the isolated guitar track of It's All Too Much reveals how much of the guitar work is loose and even offbeat, which again seems uncharacteristic for Paul. Last but not least, I think the John theory also fits with the song's opening, with John leading himself in to the burst of feedback, which is in itself reminiscent of the opening feedback from John's guitar on I Feel Fine way back in 1964. The whole moment may be sort of an inside joke even, John censoring himself for what could follow after Mother, if you know what I mean. So if it's indeed John, that means that George, when recalling the moment 30 years after the fact, was mistaken. Or maybe the opening feedback was indeed Paul's idea, but John ended up playing it on the recorded version. Anyway, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Like a lot of the most interesting Beatles mysteries and debates, the answer isn't even all that important. What I find to be more fascinating is that there can even be such an ongoing debate at all. And just like the vocals during the bridge on A Day in the Life, it's a testament to their complementary talents as musicians and their ability to blend into such a cohesive unit 
that it's often hard to discern the individual parts. Curiously, the anomalies of It's All Too Much extend beyond the song itself. Written and recorded across a few dates in May 1967, Too Much, as it was initially called, was an LSD-inspired George Harrison tribute to his then-wife Patty. It's one of those rare songs that was recorded outside of their usual home at EMI Abbey Road Studios. Instead, the band absconded to Delane Lea Studios, where the Rolling Stones and Jimi Hendrix and plenty of other contemporaries had recorded. The band also produced most of the track themselves, without the help of their longtime producer collaborator George Martin, another rare deviation from their usual formula. The song arrived too late to make it onto the Sgt. Pepper's album, which hit shelves a few days later on June 1st to widespread critical acclaim. Unfortunately, although the song was basically finished within a few days, it wasn't released in 1967 at all. The band instead decided to save it for the finale of the Yellow Submarine animated film. See you, whose soundtrack wasn't released until early 1969, which is why the song is often overlooked even by fans. If you've watched the Yellow Submarine film recently, you might have noticed that the version used in the film is different. It's cut down from six to three minutes, and it features an entirely different verse that isn't in the album version on the soundtrack. I still have the time to take this opportunity. Time for me to To this day, the full 8-minute version, with all of the original verses, has never been officially released. All these mysteries aside, I absolutely adore this song, and I know it's a favorite of many fans out there too. I consider it to be one of the finest ensemble efforts of their middle period. Ringo's drum work is extraordinary, the guitar track, whoever is playing it, is mesmerizing. The harmonies are sublime, and the core message about the overwhelming experience of feeling genuine love is delivered in a manner that's both profound and a bit cheeky. All the world is birthday cake, so take a piece, but not too much. Like so much of what the Beatles created, it was both of its time and ahead of its time, exploring sonic territory that would re-emerge in the effervescent acid rock of the 1990s from bands like The Flaming Lips who, by the way, played an amazing cover of the song. It's all too much for me to what I find most satisfying about It's All Too Much, though, is the sheer cathartic joy. Both what I feel when listening to it, but also what the Beatles themselves project in their performance here in this moment, just days before releasing what would become one of the most important albums in pop music history. This, in essence, was a celebration. And as I've said in other episodes, I think this moment in mid-1967 was the pinnacle of their career as a band. From here on out, they would continue to produce outstanding new material for almost three more years. But their creative cohesion would never quite match what they had reached in 1966 and 1967. And like many great things, in the end, it was all too much to take and couldn't go on forever. But thanks to what they preserved in tracks like It's All Too Much, the spirit of what they achieved will live on forever in their words and in their music. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode, which I'm releasing just as my channel has hit an incredible milestone of 100,000 subscribers. If you're one of those 100,000, I want to thank you personally for being part of this adventure through the many quirks and anomalies of one of my favorite bands. And if you aren't, I hope you'll join us as there's so much more to come.